There's two types that I see. One type is about three feet tall, very dark, um, very ugly, not humanoid at all. The others are very, very tall, very uh, lizard looking, uh, not pleasant. The creatures that I have seen mostly have been the, uh, the greys. And when I say tall, I'm not talking six feet, I'm talking very tall, like ten feet tall. Usually about three to four foot tall. Real big almond shaped black eyes. The face was uh, oval. The being itself couldn't have been more than three feet tall. It was uh, sitting cross-legged at the top left-hand corner of my bed. Crazy? Off the planet? Out of their tree? Well, probably. But you certainly wouldn't come here to Harvard University to look for support for those beliefs. In the great tradition of the great universities, Harvard is dedicated to the search for truth, the highest standards of intellectual inquiry. But now, the Harvard University Medical School is embracing little grey men. Little grey men from outer space who actually abduct humans. Uh, after I'd worked with 40 or 50 of these individuals, uh, I discovered to my amazement that there simply was no psychiatric explanation of this, that something real had happened to them. Dr. John Mack is professor of psychiatry at the Harvard Medical School. Professor Mack has spent the last few years listening to some people with very strange stories. Are there common factors to these experiences? Absolutely. The, the typical story, this would be a condensation of an abduction incident, say. A person is driving along in their car. They may hear a, a, a strange humming. They may see a UFO up close, or they may just see the light, powerful light coming down over the car. They feel that the car is no longer in their control. And next thing they know, they're being taken by this light or by some energy. They may see two, three more of these small beings, the most 80 to 90% of them are these little greys with these huge black eyes and rather pear-shaped heads and somewhat spindly bodies and they are transported uh, up on this energy to the UFO, sometimes through a smaller vehicle, and then that vehicle goes up into the larger mother ship. Now this is so silly, it's funny. But you can't so simply dismiss a man of Professor Max standing. In the field of psychiatry, he's highly regarded. He won a Pulitzer Prize for his acclaimed biography of Lawrence of Arabia. And his current study of alien abduction is published by Macmillan's, a respected company, and it's a bestseller. What has happened to these people is what they say has happened to them, even though I fully recognize that that's not possible in the worldview in which they and I were raised. Well, then how is it possible? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Either we try to shrink the phenomenon into something where it, as far as I can tell, won't fit, or we're going to have to stretch our notions of the possible. Well, we shouldn't be so open-minded that we're flabby, you know. <laughs> There's a certain limit to open-mindedness, and this is it. Dr. Paul McHugh is also a professor of psychiatry at the very prestigious Johns Hopkins Medical School in Baltimore. He says... Dr. Mack's theories are utter bad. nonsense. Well, Doctor, is the profession embarrassed when one of your colleagues uh, puts forward theories like this? Oh, yes, we're very embarrassed. and Embarrassed for the profession and a little worried about John himself. You know. What, he's gone off the rails a bit? Well, uh, John is a man of great gift and great intelligence, but he's also a man of, who tends to take on enthusiasms, and in this time he's gone, yeah, gone too far. We're worried about him. We hope he'll pull himself together and come back. I mean, do you think that Dr. Mack is off the rails? Off the rails? W what does that mean? Well, <laughs> um, he's a little deranged. Dr. Melkar Notman is the chairman of John Mack's faculty at Harvard. That means she's his boss. But she doesn't think that believing in little grey men is grounds for dismissal. Someone, you know, we've all had those experiences in which you decide something is utter nonsense and then you really learn that maybe half of it is utter nonsense and the other half 
uh, you really should have paid attention to. And I think we've all had that happen. So that I think we don't want to leap in and say you've got to leave the faculty because what you're doing is, you know, bizarre or, or nonsense. Doctor, do you believe that there are little grey men out there? I personally don't believe any of it. <laughs> Blue men? Any kind of little grey men. Six foot, men. three foot, nine foot? <laughs> well, my experience has started when I was very young. I can remember as far back as six years old, you know, being in my room, being, you know, just going to bed, and then aware that there were six light shafts coming down through the ceiling and would stand around my bed and start turning into a human-like looking form. They do seem to be able to, to uh, uh, walk through walls and, and materialize. Um, I thought for a while they were ghosts when I was younger, but uh, these, these beings materialize into a physical form, so it's hard to say. They might be uh, from another dimension, so to speak, or, or, or anything like that. This being rushed at me across the bed she had a tool in her hand and she was performing some mysterious procedure on me. What did it involve? I wasn't allowed to lift my head, so all I could see was what I could see looking down across my face. And I saw the tool. I, I don't even want to know what she was doing. It was, it was horrible. Um, it was frightening and it lasted a long time. Yeah, they aren't quote unquote For those who have been abducted yeah. by I mean, aliens, yeah. instance, there's a support I mean, group nice with its headquarters line. just five minutes there. from Harvard. Um, yeah, Most I mean, of the abductees seem to live here, near and Boston and, really and are patients positive. of Dr. Mack, yeah, which I makes you wonder how the aliens wow. choose their victims. I have no idea how the abductees are chosen. Uh, they seem to uh, cut across every socioeconomic level. They seem to be, this is kind of paradoxical since everyone's always trying to blame this on psychopathology, they seem to be unusually mentally sound. In other words, they seem to pick people who are particularly strong, stable, open-minded. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, these uh, people who are making these claims are wild uh, people in themselves. They have just developed a wild idea. And we have plenty of patients and plenty of people that have quite strange and false ideas about themselves. For example, feeling that they're a woman when they're a man, or feeling they're fat when they're as thin as a rake. Uh, we have all kinds of people like that, and uh, we try to help them to see reality for what it is, not go along with their idea as though uh, they were uh, the judges of truth. There's a certain sensation that you feel when they are around, it's not something you go looking for. It's all of a sudden, it's a sensation within your cell structure, actually. Has Professor Mack been a help? He's been a big help. The biggest thing he's done for me is, because of who he is, you know, I went to him because I really wanted him to tell me that, you know, I was hallucinating or there was something physiologically wrong with me or maybe I was just playing crazy. And he didn't. And after listening to me, and he looked me right in the eye and said, you know, you're not crazy. Is it possible that Dr. Mack has stumbled upon a whole new area of psychiatry? No, in fact, all he has discovered uh, is uh, a phenomenon that's been known to psychiatry for decades. In fact, here in this According book, to Dr. McHugh, the type of stories told by John Mack's patients were first classified as false memories in a psychiatric textbook published in 1912. Is there any danger in what he's doing? Oh, I think there is, yes. And uh, I'm, I quite uh, clearly believe that uh, these patients that he has, that he is claiming have been abducted, do have psychological problems. And those problems are being masked by uh, this idea that uh, the explanation is uh, this uh, crazy one. Did you ever think you were going crazy? No. No. The only thing that I thought might be possible is that there was something that was causing a very consistent experience. What that something was, I didn't know, but I never thought that I was crazy. In its long and distinguished history, Harvard University has given the world some notable discoveries. It's just hard to believe, though, that aliens from outer space is one of them. John Mack may be off with the Pixies, 
or the aliens, but he still draws a healthy salary, and Harvard professors are never, ever sacked. Well, sir, Harvard professor or not, anyone who believes what you do would believe anything. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's really not a matter of believing, Richard. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, f to me, this was utterly not possible when I first heard about it. And I, I didn't write about it. I didn't speak publicly about it for two years. This grew out of the experiences of case after case after case. So it was not like believing anything. It's, uh, I came cautiously, reluctantly, gradually to take this as seriously as I, I did. He's taken up a, uh, an idea that, uh, well, it's at its root incoherent. It uh, doesn't make any sense. And he has no evidence for it either. The two of those things combined makes you think that uh, uh, John has lost it this time. In the end, Professor McHugh says it's not a laughing matter. That, uh, Psychiatrists a have a duty of care for their I, patients. I one can propose almost anything in relationship to reality, but eventually the time has come to prove it and not simply assert it. What the source of this is, what, who these beings are, where they come from, what creates this intelligence, uh, I don't know. But there's something profoundly important going on here that is authentic and real. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.